Chris Canty. Kenny, the Rams will be the first to tell you they took the Super Bowl loss hard last year. Todd Gurley struggled. Jared Goff threw a crucial interception. And Sean McVay has been telling anyone who listened that he's the one to blame for the loss, saying that the reality is, quote, I didn't give us a chance really to have offensive production. Chris, do you think the Rams bounce back after losing the Super Bowl to the Patriots? Well, it's hard for me to answer that question because I don't know the health of Todd Gurley. I can't ignore what we saw the last month of the season and on into the postseason. He was a shell of himself. He didn't look like the guy that went from 2,000 yards from scrimmage and 21 touchdowns. So, mm -hmm. to me, the, the biggest issue is whether or not he's going to be healthy because so much of their offense is predicated on play action. That's why Jared Goff is under center more than any other quarterback in the National Football League. They rely on the threat of Todd Gurley in the backfield to be able to set up concepts in their passing game. And once so, he's not a threat. So we'll have to see what happens early on in the regular season, whether Todd Gurley has returned to form. But in listening to Sean McVay talk about what he learned from the Super Bowl, I think the biggest takeaway was that he recognizes that he does need to learn things. He does need to adapt. And the things that he struggled with throughout the course of the season, he's going to see again. That's exactly what Bill Belichick did. He threw some of the concepts that he struggled with offensively during the season on him in the Super Bowl. That's why he was able to hold that group to three points. Uh, one of the things that they did, the pre-snap operation. They like to get to the line of scrimmage where there's time on the headset communications so Sean McVay can talk to Jared Goff and tell him what he sees. But Bill Belichick, he had something to counter that. They came out, disguised their looks defensively, and Sean McVay and Jared Goff had no answers. So I think that they've got to learn from that experience try to take the lessons that they can from it, and they've got to adjust their approach coming into this year. Well, they have to adjust the 31 personnel, where the three receiver, one, one, one running back. When Cooper Cup got hurt, they had no plan B, plan C. They kept playing the same formations. Jared Goff suffered as a quarterback. The offense suffered. His quarterback rating went down 20 points with Cooper Cup. You say, well, well, what kind of player is Cooper Cup that he would make that type of difference? You need a very versatile, if you're going to play three receivers, you believe that your three receivers are better than their nickel. Now, New England, they played a, a regular lineup. And they played some nickel. But when they went to three receivers, New England crowded the line of scrimmage and dared them to pass the football. And they couldn't generate momentum because they couldn't get enough first downs to get that defense booked. When you're in 31 personnel, you're believing. Brian Billick used to tell me, Chris, are you better than their nickel back and the linebacker that they're going to bring out on you in the passing game and in the running game? If you're not, we will take you off the field. We'll put a fullback in the game, or we'll put another tight end in the game. And that's not something that Sean McVay has even looked at doing. 31 might be your best personnel, but what if someone gets hurt? You can't put that formation and think the backups can do what Cooper Cup and the other people were doing. No, and that was an adjustment that he never made. Well, and they didn't they weren't forced to make it throughout most of the season because even after Cooper Cup got hurt, even though Jared Goff's numbers went down, the Rams kept winning. They were alive for the one seed until the final two weeks of the regular season. So they 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 still finished 13 and 3. They felt like we're going to be okay. And I I respect Sean McVay immensely for putting it all on himself, for saying what we all saw, which is Belichick had multiple change-ups ready, didn't even have to go to him. Sean McVay was This is clear. the thing about it. It's a team sport. He just told you that BS. Well, that's what There's I, no way it's his whole responsibility. Well, that's what he I was, just and, and players don't like that because they know he's lying. Be genuine in it. It's not all his fault. There were players who could have made plays to make a difference in that game. Well, that's what I was about to get to, is that while Sean McVay could have put them in a better position from the sideline, the other element here is Jared Goff didn't adjust. Jared Goff all of a sudden looked awful young, let's put it like that, when he didn't have all three of his receivers, when he didn't have Todd Gurley playing like league MVP caliber running back Todd Gurley. And I believe part of what we saw from Jared Goff in the second half of the season and in the Super Bowl is one of the reasons that We want to see another year from him because is Jared Goff a great quarterback or is he a quarterback who can be great in the perfect system with the perfect pieces around him? With McVay talking him through things as long as you can. With McVay kind of being a second set of eyes once he gets the line of scrimmage. With the opposing defense worrying much more about the running game than the passing Wait, game. I, I don't agree with you on that. I believe that Sean McVay, just like Kyle Shanahan, 
is going to utilize the play clock and the mic and the helmet, no matter who their quarterback is. Mm -hmm. Even in Atlanta, when he had a veteran, that's what Kyle Shanahan, and when they teach that, that's what the coaches are teaching. That's one of the advantages to playing offensive football. So for me, I would say it's not Jared Goff. That's the way Sean McVay is going to utilize the play clock because that is a huge advantage that the offensive players have when the quarterback is mic'd up, the ability to be able to continue to give him information until that cuts off. So for me, I like Jared Goff as a passer. He has shown me that he is definitely a high-level NFL quarterback. Their problem as far as a contract is they've already gave out two jumbo deals. Mm -hmm. They gave Todd Gurley his deal. And, and they. Ronald. So they can't be in a rush. They're not like the Cowboys. They've already given out a huge portion of their salary cap. They have to be very strategic in who they're going to sign next. No, you're absolutely right. Now Quarterback that's under 26 that's gotten his team to a Super Bowl. So Jared Goff is going to get paid by the Rams. We just don't know when that's going to take place. As far as his performance on the field, I agree with you, CC, that Sean McVay is going to continue to take advantage of the coach to quarterback communication system in their approach and how they do their pre snap operation. But what happens when the defense adjusts like New England in the Super Bowl right. when they jump into a different look after that communication cuts off? See, that's the part of it that I think Sean McVay needs to do a better job with training. Jared Goff throughout the course of the preseason and the regular season so he has answers when in fact he gets that look from a defense if that situation were to take place again. I think a lot of the onus has to be on the coaching staff to make sure that they help him evolve in terms of the cerebral aspect of the game. That's something that Sean McVay has to continue to work with Jared Goff on because after all the reason that he got the job was because they wanted to get the most out of their number one overall well, draft. Let's get back to the first thing you said. How much of this offense is handcuffed if Todd Gurley is not not Todd Gurley. If who we see as Todd Gurley is the same guy that ended the season last year, how good could Jared Goff be? How good could this uh, offense all, be? Their, their ceiling drops three floors. I mean, this is a guy who's Offensive Player of the Year, who leads the NFL in touchdowns, who can do it catching the ball, running the ball, and make a huge impact on plays when he never touches the ball because of the threat of play action, because of having those linebackers sync up because they're worried about him. He, he was the guy that when he got that contract with two years left, nobody questioned it. Everyone knew how good he was. So he, he's the best player on their offense. Aaron Donald might be the best player on their team. He's the best player on their offense. I have higher expectations. I don't believe they dropped that far. If you saw last year when C.J. Anderson ran the ball, the offense was better. It was not the Todd Gurley, but they didn't have another receiver. They didn't have another formation to go to. So you guys are blaming it all on the quarterback and everything. They, they ran the ball with C.J. Anderson in there. I believe they'll run the ball with Malcolm Brown being in there as the backup because they have a top 10 offensive line. So, yes, they can move the ball without Todd Gurley, but you have to be creative. Sean McVay's got to earn his money. He's got to be able to put him in some good looks, and the look that he threw the interception in the Super Bowl was not a good look. They fooled him in coverage. Stephon Gilmore faked like he was going to be in bump and run, bailed out, and ended up intercepting that ball inside the five-yard line, which basically ended the game. So it is a continuing build, not only with the quarterback, but with the coach and the rest of this offense. Yeah, right. the offense has to have more variety in terms of schemes and personnel groupings. I mean, if you have a couple of seasons where you're lining up in 11 personnel, three wide receivers, one running back, one tight end, sure. I mean, teams are going to put that under a microscope. They're going to find a way to neutralize that. It's up to Sean McVay to put more in it. They need to have more versatility in their approach and their overall attack. All right, we got to take a break. Candy, we'll see you in a little bit coming up. Is Kyler Murray about to set the league on fire? That is next on First Things First.